Okay, don't mind. Okay, today one day there is something issue. So today's class mainly, you know, uh, we'll be discussing on uh, uh, the connections part generally, uh, which I mean to say, like, you know, uh, different kind of boxes what we have for ECC and uh, EWM. So that we are going to see today in the system and how it will be set up. OK, system connections. So in real time, you will not be doing this activity. Okay, when in the real time, the projects and all, you will not be doing this activity. This activity will be done by the basis team normally. System connections. So why you will not do is like this is like uh, some kind of uh, system connections, not uh, not completely functional. It's uh, some kind of connecting the systems. So why we are speaking about connecting systems first of all? So as we told that OK, there are two deployment options for EWM. What are the deployment options we discussed? First of all, one thing is like decentralized system. Other is what? Embedded. So decentralized systems are embedded systems. What exactly decentralized means? The previous classes and all we discussed about decentralized are embedded. So we discussed some theoretically. So what is decentralized? Uh, we have two server. We have two servers. Uh, one is uh, ECCRS for another one is EWM system. Uh, two standalone systems are there. Okay, just e ECC will take. And what you mean to say? We have two standalone and systems are there, which is ECC correct. this one, and this is like EWM. Okay. Yes. Two different boxes you mean to say, right? So how system knows that? This ECC, ECC means what? There are a lot of modules will be there right here. MM module, SSD module, whatever it may be. It can be CRM, whatever it may be. We have different multiple modules are there in ECC. So EWM we bought in a different box. EWM we have in a separate box. Now, if your system ECC is connecting to EWM, how system knows that I connected to ECC, I connected to EWM? How system knows? Forget about all these things. How ECC? In ECC, we have all the modules. So how system knows that ECC is connected to EWM? This system is connected to ECC. Now we have one one system. Here we have only one ECC system. Here we have only one EWM system. So you can easily tell that, okay, this system is connected to this system. Okay, now let's see. I have ECC one. CC two, and we have three systems. Okay, and now we have EWM system, one system we have. Now, why we have three systems here? Just an example you can tell. Why we have three systems here? Why do we have three systems here? ECC. For memory constraint, they may be split up, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you split normally? Memory constraint is fine. How do you split it? So support your sub you are supporting for one company called Volvo. Example you take as your Volvo. You are supporting for Volvo company. So Volvo company, if you take Volvo is having business in how many countries? Just yeah, divide by regions. APAC yes. region. Okay, APAC region. Okay, and the uh, Europe region and uh, some kind of in North America region. North America, Europe, and Asian. Right. We have three regions are there now. Now, all the regions in Volvo is having company in all the regions. Now, now they will maintain only one system. They will maintain two systems. They will maintain three systems. How they will maintain? It's up to them how they will maintain. 
it's an arbitrary decision how they will maintain the systems. They will maintain by the regions, they will maintain by the company codes, or they will maintain the, by the plans, it's up to them. Now I can tell you a small example. So Volvo Europe is using this system. Okay, and Volvo North America using this system, and Volvo Asia using this system. Means what? In Asia, how many plants are there? What all business are there? All things happening in the system only. Procurement, sales, everything will happen in the system, from the system. And this system, North America region, what and all purchasing, what and all sales, all these things in, in the system. And this is Europe. From Europe, what and all uh, purchasing activities happening and all those things will happen from this system. Now, for all these three systems, we have only one EWM system. We have only one EWM system. Means what? This system is connected to this system. This one, this one, this one, this one. So all these three systems connected to the EWM system. All these three systems connected to EWM system. Is it possible or not? Yes, Is possible. it possible or not? It's possible, possible. Absolutely possible. So now possible means the system should know that the system should know that they are receiving order from the system. Suppose if you take one PO, if you take one PO purchase order. So EWM received on purchase order. Means what? Inbound. Some kind of inbound you are receiving with respect to PO. Now that PO you are receiving from this system. System should know, right? That PO you are receiving from this system or this system or this system. They should know, right? For that, first of all, you should do connections, right? First of all. We need to do the connections between ECC and EWM, right? Yes. So this is one of the option where multiple ECC systems can connect to EWM systems. Multiple ECC systems can connect to one EWM system. The other way also is available. What is the other way? The other way is like. Other way is. The other way is I have one ECC. So this part you will not be doing in the real time. Okay, real time means you will not be handling this activity, but the basic part you should know the basic. I have one ECC is there and multiple EWM systems I have. Multiple EWM systems I have. I have EWM one. And three. So I have three systems are there, EWM systems. I have three EWM systems are there. Now, same client, Volvo client, is handling the regions, Volvo Asia, Volvo Europe, and Volvo North America. They are using only one system, one EC system they are using, one box they are using, one client. So totally one system they are using, but when it comes to EWM system, various management system, they divided the EWM boxes here. So they are using this box for Asia, this box for Europe, this box for North America. Now, even though if you are using three systems for EWM, one system for ECC, ECC should connect with how many systems now here? Three systems. Three systems. We need to connect ECC to three systems. For the point. For that, normally basis team will be there in every company. Basis team. Basis team. If you want to make a note, make a note. Okay. Every company basis team will be there. So they are the main persons who will take this activity system connections. System connections they will be performing. Getting the point, guys? I'll show you a small example now. 
if you see here whenever you join any company so when you join any company logons will be there so if you are logging in so logons will be coming automatically there is no password and all required if you see here this is like same thing if you see here i want to close this one is not closing okay so this is the logon here how many systems you can see here three systems forget about this one okay forget about okay. this one this is okay. like embedded okay forget about this okay. one let me remove this one Okay, how many systems we have now? Two systems. Okay, I means how many boxes we have here? Two. Two boxes. If I have five boxes, it means what? How many it will be there here? Suppose this example, if you take here, how many boxes I have in the diagram? Three. 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 Then four. Three EWM on ECC. Yeah, totally. We have four boxes. Now, if you see four boxes are there in real time, how many logons will be there here? How many logons will be there? Four. If then you have four boxes here, how many logons will be there? Uh, it may be based on the client settings, correct? Uh, uh, they can manage a different client or uh, separate boxes. They can manage it. That's what we have separate box right here. See, separate box means separate client here. See here, separate okay. box means separate client normally. So this is one box. Okay, this is one client. This is one box, different client. This is separate box, different client. This is separate box, different client. If we have four boxes here, four clients will be there. Four logons will Correct. be there. Correct. EWM North America, EWM APAC, EWM Europe. ECC is only one. It, it, you can tell that ECC in the okay. brackets you can keep central system. ECC central system. EWM North America system. EWM Europe system. EWM uh, North uh, Asia Asia. Like that, we can divide the systems here. Miss, is it client or system? Don't confuse. Okay, few companies are called as system, few companies are called as clients. Okay, so again, naming convention is okay. It's up to them how they will call. But just observe here, as we are in IDA system, we are in practicing of EWM. Okay, we have only two systems. Okay, we can't manage multiple systems, but we have only two systems. But in the real time, you may have, you may are, you may are, you may not be having. Multiple systems. Get the point? Yes. Okay. In the same case, if you see embedded system, how it looks like embedded systems? In this case, embedded systems, if you take, how it looks like here? Embedded systems. Only one login will be there. Uh... Exactly. Only one login will be there for ECC and EWM. Once you log in there, in that only you are maintaining both the system, both the boxes combinedly you are maintaining that. Means what? If you take example here, so here separated ECC, EWM is separated here. If you take one more example. So ECC is there, okay. Now EWM is not a separate box in, 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 in embedded one. It's not a separate box. It's a same box. It's a part of one box, ECC and EWM. Okay. We internally we are segregating. Internally we are segregating ECC and EWM, but it comes under same box. Got the point? And remaining everything yeah. will be same. Remaining everything yeah. will be same almost. Okay, inside we are differentiating between ECC and EWM, but in the decentralized systems, we are separating boxes here, separating activities. Here also we can divide mm -hmm. multiple systems here inside also. You can keep like EWM1, EWM2, and EWM3. I can maintain three systems here separately. Means within the same box, I'm dividing. So uh, here, can we assume like uh, in a SPRO, IMG activity, there's uh, something like they have already integrated with this? This one, you're speaking about this one? Yeah. yeah. The package, however, they take right with SAP, the architect. 
so they will decide the, all those things uh -huh. activities yes it's a part of spro config only but it depends on the version systems what they are taking okay mainly okay. basic team will they will be taking care of all these activities we will not be taking care of these activities just for knowledge purpose we are discussing this one okay okay there will be some uh, configs also there okay where uh, uh, the config you can so i can show you So, yeah, this is sorry. So, it's not part of EWM config or any config, it's a part of basis config. Okay, it's a different module basis, they will be taking care of this config. Okay. Oh, I'm not authorized for that one. Okay, to see, but in the real time, at least you can see that. But uh, in this system, I'm not authorized to see. Okay, see, can you see here? Any transaction, if you're not authorized to see in SAP, it will show like this. You're not authorized to see transaction SAP level 5. Why it is not authorized, guys? Because this authorization, they'll give it to you only for, only for the basis team. This T code authorization, they'll give it for only for the basis team. Okay, not for EWM team. Let me show you in Google if you want. Yeah, if you see here, this is called ASF developer transaction here. If you observe carefully this image, if you observe carefully this image, let me copy this image. Okay, are you able to see clearly this one? Are you able to see? Yes, yes. Hello. Yes. So here you can see different business functions you can see here. Here one of the function it will be there as extended warehouse management EWM. Normally, if you open this transaction, it will show a lot of business activities like normally thousands of activities it will show extra activities. And here it will show this color if you see the yellow color one. The yellow color one is like. It is not within the package which you have taken. If you want this one, you need separate package for this one. Like that, it will show EWM like if you see here EAM it is showing. Like that it will show EWM also. If you come scroll down and all, you can see EWM, external virus management that you need to activate here. The business functions you need to activate here. This will be done by the basis team. OK, and you will not be having authorization to check also. Just knowledge purpose. Okay, in the interview, they may ask you this small, small things for that purpose. Even I wanted to teach basics also. Uh, I want you to, you know, uh, uh, good base on the basics part so that it will be easy for you to understand. OK, first of all, you need to activate the business functionality here. OK, to if you are using EWM. Okay, I, I don't have authorization to show you. That's the reason I'm not showing for you. Okay. And if I log out,
here we are discussing about multiple systems ecc ewm ewm2 and ewm we are discussing about multiple systems how system code will be defined here how do you define the system how do you define the system this is ecc this is ewm this is ewm2 this is ewm3 how do you define the systems if i open sap here i am logging to ecc when i am logging to ecc system is telling which client system is telling me which client you want to log in which client you want to log into means what this system i am giving one number this system i am giving as 900 this system i am giving as 111 this system i am giving as 112 this system i am giving as 113 in the real time okay you will not be having username and password you will not be you know giving username and passwords most of the companies okay auto logins will be there okay and you can see the client numbers okay this no need to enter and all okay just once you click on this uh, logon pad it will be automatically it will get logged in okay now this client number if you see 900 this is for what this is for ecc this is for ecc and if you open ewm system if i open ewm system what the client number it is having what the client number it is there 110 so it means that we are defining the systems by a three digit code we are defining the systems by three digit code client number we are defining the client number by three digit code getting the point guys understood okay now you know how do you define the systems this system we are defining by client number this system client number client number client number we are defining the client numbers not not we as a basic system we are doing the client numbers now how they are establishing the connections here how they are establishing the connections means what why we need connections first of all can anyone tell me why we need connections ecc to ewm this ewm this ewm why we need connections first of all data should be synchronous uh, mm -hmm. only data sync yeah both data should be synced mm -hmm. only uh, varos can do the gr or uh, activities or ge activities based on inbound delivery mm -hmm. or outbound delivery they will do it mm -hmm. exactly now i wanted to uh, explain you a bit deep in this part as you said you were right but i want to explain you a bit deep here i want to explain you two different things here ecc what are the activities will be done you, you if you can answer me if you know okay you can take inbound purchase order you can take okay and you can tell me ecc what will happen ewm what will happen inbound I mean, delivery most of the people knows what is purchase order right yeah anyone don't know what is purchase order you can ask me now okay because if you don't know purchase order and all i can tell you but later you can tell me like you know i don't know what is purchase order and all okay you know the you know this one right what is purchase order and all now ecc what activities will happen in ecc what activities will happen purchase order inbound delivery gr after that wait wait wait, 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 wait. purchase order is fine next or uh, inbound delivery inbound delivery okay next uh, gr gr will happen in ecc then what is the ewm then uh, uh, no actually in inventory system they will do the gr and it will interface to our our system no no i am not asking about the reflections and all okay what activity system it will take original activity c ecc if it take mm module mm is for what mm is for, for the creation of pr creation of po uh, creation of import delivery. delivery okay up to delivery creation only ecc will take care but what is ewm here EWM will receive the goods. EWM is a physical location. EWM is a physical location. Okay, now if I take example, 
PCC. The example of ECC. ECC. in the right way to cut fine. So tell me ECC part. ECC part, what is happening? You are going to create the PO. Purchase order. You are purchasing goods from the vendor. If you are purchasing goods from the vendor, you will create a PO in ECC. You will get inbound delivery. And with the vendor is supplying goods to the plant physically, where exactly the transport it will go? Store location. Uh... It will go to the respective plant to the location. We will get as warehouse here. It will go here. Means up to the creation of PO, it is fine. You are creating in systematically, but the vendor should deliver right. Now you are creating yes. PO. You are creating PO and you are creating inbound delivery, everything. Okay, and you've got the uh, shipping notification, everything you got. Now you need to deliver the goods. Vendor should deliver the goods, right? Okay, once, once the vendor get all the things, when the vendor get the purchase order copy, everything, now vendor will pack everything into the container and they will ship the goods to the respective system. Now, in the plant, what will happen? Once they receive the goods, they will do the unloading. Once they do the unloading, parallelly, they will post a GR. Unloading GR, it will happen parallelly. That's fine. Now, now once you unload, then the goods they will keep in the respect to final put away location. Means what? GR, unloading, GR, put away, everything happen in the EWN system. Now tell me. In the system, what is happening here? Unloading part, GR part, and put away part, everything happening in the EW system. Right? Get in the point? Yes, understood. Okay, now ECC is creating PO, inbound delivery, and EWM is going to receive the same PO. With respect to same PO, they are receiving the goods. How system knows that? ECC, you created the PO and that we are receiving it. Here we have two different systems we have. Here we have two different systems, right? Let's forget about these things, okay? Let's forget about these activities. We have only two boxes, ECC box and EWM box. Okay, how system knows that? Okay, we created a PO and we are receiving it. This system created the PO. This system is receiving the goods. How system knows that? That is called RFC, remote function call. Uh, I have a doubt, can I ask? No? Yes. Uh, can yes. you explain uh, short and uh, little support to inbound delivery? Is it mandatory mm -hmm. or how? Uh, so that what is you, mandatory? Uh, inbound delivery. Can you explain about it, uh, what is inbound delivery? Uh, See, in the terms of if you are not using EWM, if you are not using EWM part, then inbound delivery mandatory or not, it's up to the company their limits but in case if you are using ewm system mm -hmm. in case if you are using ewm system then inbound delivery are mandatory means what you will create po for 1000 quantity okay you will create po 1000 quantity but at a time 